Now we're coming to a very interesting and a very exciting and a very important part. I simply call it the camaraderie. It's the gatherings of the team. Now you've heard me say this, I would say at least a hundred times. You've got to be available for ongoing training. We have to keep the training and the development going as we move forward all the time. We've got to keep that going. So the key to the sustained success of the care ministry network is the entire team of care ministers working together to accomplish the common goal. As he said, teamwork makes the dream work. So the care ministry is not a solo enterprise. If ever you find yourself functioning in a vacuum, something is wrong. In our endeavor to develop a strong team spirit and to become most effective in our ministry efforts, there are two immutably essential elements. Number one, teamwork, and number two, ongoing training. On the right-hand side, it says, team, what is it? It's together, everyone achieves more. So we want to function as a team. So when we look at teamwork, we say that, that as is the case with most other ministries in a local church, a great positive team spirit must prevail. This cohesiveness produces results in the congregation that are life-changing and also creates an atmosphere that makes it easy to care for one another. To realize this goal, everyone who is involved must gather for times of fellowship and growth. Now, before you turn the page, I underline that sentence, please. Now, to realize this goal, what goal? The goal of teamwork. Everyone, underline, everyone who is involved must gather for times of fellowship and growth. When we say everyone, we mean everyone, not only the care ministers, but the care shepherds, the team leaders, and everybody. Why do we want to do that? We want to do that primarily for ongoing learning and for teamwork building. When we talk about ongoing learning, we're saying that ongoing training, that's your word, training, and development are necessary to keep up with the demands of an ever-changing culture. We do not ever want to find ourselves at a point of stagnation. Everybody say amen. amen. For this reason, specific gatherings are at the core, C-O-R-E, of ongoing development. And again, there's your page reference. Draw a circle around that so that you can go back and read that in your handbook. So we're talking about the, what, what I call the prevailing camaraderies. The first thing we're going to talk about is the monthly fellowship. Your monthly fellowship. The purpose of monthly fellowship is to stay in touch with and learn from one another. And this is what removes the Lone Ranger Syndrome. A care director from, I think it was in Florida one time, called me and said, he doesn't understand, but the, the enthusiasm of his care pastors have, have waned. And uh, he said he doesn't know what to do. And I, I asked him, I said, do you have your monthly fellowships? Do you have your quarterly summits? He said, no, I've never done that. I said, that's your problem. Your people are functioning in a vacuum. They think that they're the only ones that are facing what they are facing. But if you get them together in a fellowship, in a monthly uh, meeting, and a quarterly meeting, we'll talk about both in just a moment, you'll find that they come together as a team, 
and they will begin to encourage each other, and they will also hear that some other people are also struggling with some things that they're struggling with, then they realize it's not because they're doing something wrong, it's just the way that it goes. And that way they are encouraged. The moment you let your care minister function in a vacuum, I can tell you there's going to be a lot of attrition. You don't want that. You've got to keep them in a cohesive team and develop that team spirit at all times. It also serves to sustain progress within the network. The more interconnected the team becomes, the more effective the ministry will function. <clears throat> now, there's a difference between the monthly fellowship and the quarterly summit that we're going to consider in just a moment. In as much as that the monthly fellowship does not have to be lengthy, and sometimes one could hold it around another regularly scheduled church meeting. Best practices in this regard are before a midweek service or after the Sunday morning service. <coughs> Customarily, the monthly fellowship is the time and place for leaders to update the care shepherds and care pastors of what's happening in the church at large. It's also a convenient occasion to share some of the exciting upcoming things, again, like special functions, uh, events, pastor sermon series, and ministry needs. So what are we talking about over here? Uh, say before or after a service, all of the care ministers gather together, with, and the care shepherds, of course, as well. And in that uh, point in time, the care leaders, just somebody give an update, Things are going well, getting exciting feedback, whatever, uh, and, and say, what we do want you to focus on, we have heard uh, this, that, the other. Let's concentrate on these three things as we go forward, or whatever it may be. Just short, almost a stand-up meeting, not a sit-down, not sit at table, just stand up and have this meeting, but it is a monthly fellowship where you just get together. Some churches have it more extensively, and that's where you want to go. That's fine, too. But in this meeting, you are getting together in team spirit. Are there any problems? Let's talk about the problems. Let's find a solution right over here. Let's work on it. If there's something we cannot solve here, we'll find the answer, and we'll get back to you. Now, as care director, I want you to know what's going to happen next month. These things are going to happen in the church over the next month. When you make your call to your people, this is what you can relate to them. So when you make your monthly call to your people to inform them of what's happening in the church over the next month, this is where you got your information from. You got your information from the monthly fellowship. This is where the leadership told you as a care minister what's going to happen in the next month, what pastors are going to preach about, what special series coming up, or what events are coming up. You got that information there at the monthly fellowship so that when you call your people with your monthly contact, you have facts and information to share with them. Is that, does that make it clear? Yes. All right. So that's how everything rolls and, and works together. We got that as leadership team? Got that? All right. That's the important part of the, the monthly fellowship. Now, the quarterly summit. Now, that is a monkey of a different color. That's not just before or after a service. This usually happens on a Saturday morning. Traditionally, it seems like all over the nation. So, again, on page 162, you'll find all of the description of your quarterly summit like you did on page 160 for the monthly fellowship. Now we realize, and we've said this over and over, that continuing education is imperative to the ongoing success of the care ministry network. And the quarterly summit serves this purpose primarily. Training and development should be at the heart of this summit. Things change so rapidly. We should stay on top of it. So, Allow ample time for questions and answers. 
Generally, a seminar format works best for the quarterly summit. Although this is not a requirement of this event, food always adds an advantage. You and I know that, right? Makes me think of when we got here at our first men's fellowship. They said that they were going to serve red beans and rice. I, can't even, I cannot even begin to tell you what my South African mind was thinking when they said red beans and rice. The craziest combination I've heard <laughs> soon became my favorite. <laughs> well, all Cajun food became my favorite, you can tell, right? Now, on the top of page 49, I'm saying this meeting usually happens on a Saturday morning in a more relaxed atmosphere so no one feels rushed like you would do it before or after uh, a midweek or any other service. Now this assembly takes place only four times a year. And every care shepherd, care pastor, and their assistant should join in at the quarterly summit to receive further instruction and also to be refreshed for the next few months ahead. Although fellowship time forms a part of the meeting, the teaching is at the core of this gathering and should remain the focus. So we gathered on, on Saturday mornings, but I can remember, Pastor Gary and, and Darlene, that there were times we did it on a Sunday morning. Uh, because it grew so fast and it grew so large that we had some of our quarterly meetings on a uh, Sunday morning while the service was going on. But at that point in time, even if all the care ministers were withdrawn, you couldn't even see the difference in the congregation. Uh, so that's not a practical suggestion. Most churches should not opt to go that way. I'm just saying that. F be flexible, but in my estimation, it, it happens best on a Saturday morning. Uh, so bear that in mind. Uh, and teaching should be it. It should not just be fellowship, but teaching. Bring them something. And again, I will help you with that. I'll help you with teaching outline, and at least to get you started uh, to know what to, to give to them. All right, so providing meaningful care is time-consuming, especially if you purpose to remain relevant. So these intentional and deliberate get-together times are the catalysts that keep this ministry dynamic. The care director and the leadership team must set their minds to arrange these, and the care shepherds and the care pastors should make every effort to attend them. To remain commissioned as a care pastor or care minister in your case, you must attend at least 80% of these events during the year. Some churches make that a, 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 a law, others don't. But what, what we are trying to emphasize are that these gatherings are important. We have to have you there so that we can help you to develop. Then number three, there is the annual celebration. But before I go to the annual celebration, there may be questions about the monthly fellowship and the quarterly summit. Are there any questions about those two? Anything that's not clear? Anything you want to say more or hear more about that? I don't see a hand. All right. Let's move on. Number three is what we call the annual celebration. The annual celebration takes place at the end of the ministry year, one year after launch of the ministry. We're saying that because it should not be at the end of the calendar year, because the end of the calendar year is already packed with all kind of Christmas programs and children's programs and whatever. But say you, say you launch in September, then obviously your your celebration will be at the end of September next year. All right? That's pretty simple. 
And this should be a time of celebration with special emphasis on appreciating the workers. Fun and fellowship should be at the order of the day. Uh, to be sure, the annual celebration is not a time for instruction or education. Please underline that. This is not a time for instruction or education. It's a time of celebration. Uh, the annual celebration is what we would call an all-hands-on-deck occasion. The lead pastor and other staff members should form part of this event. Participating should all be the family members of the care shepherd, care pastor, and everyone else who is involved in the ministry. A great time of celebration, of giving God praise, probably hear some good testimonies, good things that have happened. Even have a video if we could, and absolutely have a great time of celebration. Then the fourth one, that's important, and I've been alluding to it several times, it's called the commissioning service. Now again, on page 166 through 168, you find all the details pertaining to the commissioning service. Now, after you in this room have completed the qualification process, underline that qualification process, the lead pastor and the leadership team of the Care Ministry Network officially appoint and publicly introduce them. The lead pastor arranges for the ceremony to take place in the presence of the entire congregation. During the commissioning service, it is reasonable to assert that commissioning is to a care pastor what credentialing is to the clergy. Can I say that again? The commissioning is to a care minister what credentialing is to the clergy. So we give all the instructions to the leadership team uh, in the book that they have, the handbook for pastors and leaders, we give all the details to them, how to put it together, how to organize it. But it needs to be a very nice and appropriate, almost like a graduation service, where people are called forward, hands laid upon them, anointed with oil, present them with a certificate, introduce them to the church, and authorize them to the congregation to function going forward as care ministers. If you do not do that, if you don't authorize them publicly, they will never feel like they have the authority to function as care ministers because they will assume nobody knows what they're doing. And where do they, who, who are you? Call you care minister? Where did you come from? But if we do it proper and we have this commissioning, it makes all the difference in the world when we publicly announce them. And I am so happy when I look across all of you in this room, I see a wide spectrum of age groups, and I love that, because the care ministry is not intended only for senior citizens. Neither is it intended only for younger people. It is for all ages, and we want an age spread of everybody involved within the congregation to be part of this ministry. And we have that in this room this afternoon. Great job, leaders. Great job, pastor. That's the way it needs to be. That tells me that this ministry will continue to go along because we have some younger people that will be able to take over from us and continue what God has called us to do. Now, we say at the top of page 50 that this commissioning should take place in the presence of the entire congregation. All right? During the commissioning ceremony, care ministers receive an official certificate of completion from the JWB Institute for Leaders and Laity Development. And I'm sure you've already seen in the book and on the website how to get it. They way ahead. I mean, Kathy already showed me the application form. It's already printed. It's already... You're a bunch of smart people in this church. So, uh, we have found that many graduates frame these certificates and displace them prominently in their own. Always a blessing. Care pastor complete. Uh, couples receive professional-looking name tags as well. 
uh, these service identification when you serve in your role in the church. And since your name will appear on the name tag, you should wear it at every church and ministry occasion. All right? <laughs>